गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज दी एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ फर्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग कॉन्सेप्ट सो हियर फर्स्टली आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग एज यू ऑल नो दैट यू हैव टेकन computer application subject in the 9th standard and you are going to learn a computer language you can also call it programming language you are already familiar that you all are going to learn java programming language in the 9th standard and before starting <clears throat> the introduction to java programming here first chapter is on the topic object oriented programming so the introduction to java that is the next chapter and here we will see some concepts some principles are there some concepts are there some approaches are there <clears throat> and on these concepts or uh, programming approaches java is based on so hence it is very important to study the concepts on which java programming is based every programming language is based on some approach or concepts so here first introduction is there so as you know that computer language is a special language which is used to develop or which is used to write the programs for the computer why programs are written for the computer to develop application or the softwares so there are many programming languages every programming language has its advantages and disadvantages every programming language has the different applications means the fields where that language can be used so let's see in the introduction it is given that there are different approaches like procedural approach is there structured approach is there and modular approach is there so every language is based upon these approaches like some languages are based on procedural approach some are based on structured approach and some are based on modular approach now what is approach approach is the way or the method in which a program is supposed to be written so every language has a approach so according to the approach the programs are written in that language for example here procedural approach is given in the procedural approach the programs are divided into procedures or methods and every method is defined separately the functioning of the method of the every method is different from the other and you can call to the method that you want to execute differently <clears throat> so this approach is the procedural similarly structured approach is there in the structured approach the programs are written in well structured so there is a predefined structure of every program in which the program must be written and then we have the modular approach what is a modular modular means a module so different modules can be defined for, for the program and every module is uh, doing work uh, just like uh, methods or functions similarly next approach we have object oriented approach and this is the latest approach in the computer programming 
several programming languages are based on this approach that is the object oriented approach so what is object oriented approach in object oriented approach the programs are written as objects suppose and this approach is based on the real life situations as we know that uh, in the real life uh, everything is categorized into classes classes means categories for example uh, students are there and you all belong to the student class and the student is a class in the real world suppose we teachers are there in the school so many teachers are there lady teachers are there gents teachers are there different subject teachers are there but they all belong to one category that is the teachers moreover suppose we all are human beings and we all belong to the human class suppose there is a, a class of vehicles like car truck bus motorcycle is there they all belong to one class that is the vehicle class so in this way uh, you can imagine or you can see that in the world everything is divided into categories or classes and according to the class we can define the object now suppose you want to build a house okay new house you want to build what you will do firstly you will create its a prototype okay prototype means a blueprint blueprint means a design so firstly you will create it you will go to the architecture and you will design its a, a template so which type of house you want what should be on the first floor what should be on the second floor and like that each and everything in the house you will plan and that will become a model or blueprint and according to that blueprint you will build a house and when your house will be ready okay in the real world that house suppose you have built that house and you are living in that house that house is an object okay and the template or the blueprint from which that house is derived or that house is built that was a class so similarly suppose a car manufactures okay they manufacture a car but before manufacturing the car actually they build its a design or they build its a blueprint or template so that is the car class and according to the template they will build a car in the real world so that car will be an object in the real world okay similarly all the things like pen copy car house refrigerator ac bike all these are object in real world and they all belong to a particular class so <clears throat> this is the approach that is the object oriented approach which is used in java programming and this approach is based on the real life so whatever is in the real life that can be represented in the software with the help of java so an object in the real world for example copy pen teacher student and that object can be represented in the software terms suppose you are going to the computer okay in the school and the computer operator he enters your name in the computer <clears throat> and it will show you your all data your name your class your date of birth your address your phone number and everything so it means your information is stored in the computer you are the real world object and the object which is containing your information in the computer or in the software that is called a software object so that's why 
we are going to read this approach that is the object oriented programming approach because java is based on this approach in just like in real world we can also create a classes we can also create the objects in java programming and these object and these classes can be uh, represented just like uh, in real world they are now the thing we have that is the evolution of programming languages now see time to time everything is changing today something is different tomorrow something new will come and in the same way programming languages they are also changing time to time earlier we were using the some old programming languages and now we have some other programming languages because according to the demand of time everything has to change so here we have uh, the first thing that uh, programming languages a programming language is a language or you can say it is a computer language in which programs are written so you can write a program for example in the earlier classes uh, you have studied html hypertext markup language that is also a language but that language was used to develop web pages okay and similarly we have the java language and this language is used to develop a computer application or softwares so we can categorize the programming language into two categories the first category is low level language and the second category is high level languages low level means you must know that uh, computer is a machine and uh, its language is binary language binary means the language of zeros and ones means everything is represented in the form of zero and one and zero and one is a code so every instruction every command have a separate separate codes zero and one so codes are in the combination of two digits only zero or one digit so computer understand only <coughs> machine language or the binary language now see if a program is written in such a language that is understood directly by the computer that is low level so suppose a program is written in the machine language or a binary language so that program will be called low level language because it is directly understood by the computer so in low level language the program that is written it need not to be translated in the computer language because it is also it is already in the computer language so there is no need for the translator for the low level languages next we have the high level language any language means any programming language in which a program is written just like uh, in the english words okay suppose you are writing a paragraph in english in the similar way we are writing a program for the computer in english language for example you are creating a web page in html and in notepad what you are writing tags and all the tags are in english only so in the similar way if the program is written in english okay not in the binary language so if your source code so the program which you are writing for the computer that is called source code s o u r c e source code so if the source code is written in english that language is called high level language but here one problem is there if the program is written in high level language but you know that computer understand only machine language then we have to convert the high level program into machine 
so here in high level programming language you need a translator okay you need a compiler compiler or translator or interpreter whatever you call it you can call it compiler or interpreter or translator so you need an translator which is translating the high level program into machine language okay so that computer can understand the meaning of the program and can do accordingly so this is called high level language i hope you have understood these two what is the meaning of low level language and what is the meaning of a high level language now here we will uh, discuss some generation of uh, high level languages so here the generation there are five generations of programming languages by name we call it 1gl that is the first generation language 2gl second generation language 3gl third generation language 4gl that is the fourth generation language and 5gl that is the fifth generation language and 5gl is the latest approach or latest programming language fifth generation so we will start from the 1gl that is the first generation language as i already told you that earlier program were written machine language okay that is the binary so everything was given or every instruction was given in the form of binary digits that is the 0 and 1 so 0 means false and 1 means true so all the codes they are given in the form of 0 and 1 and the these codes can be directly executed by the cpu so this is the first generation of programming languages so what was the problem in first generation because everything was written in the form of 0 and 1 codes in the form of codes so it was difficult to write long programs okay because it would it will it would be very difficult to remember all those codes that they are that are used to give the instruction to the computer so due to that reason then came second generation programming language so in the second generation programming language they made this task easier they made the programming easier for the programmer so second generation language is the assembly language okay so in the assembly language we use some english words in place of codes they are called mnemonics okay mnemonics and mnemonics like uh, a d d add for addition m o v for moving something m u l for multiplying something r e a d read to read something from the memory okay these english words they are called mnemonics okay now these mnemonics are easy to remember okay and they have a meaning so in assembly language the program was written with the help of mnemonics and codes and in the assembly language the program is again translated into the machine language with the help of a software called assembler so assembler is used in the assembly language to translate assembly language program into machine code next came the third generation language now third generation language you no know, first generation and second generation they both are low level languages okay third generation it is the programming language from where we started high level languages like c c++ basic java all these are the third generation languages and in these languages okay we can design the programs which are platform independent means the programs can be written for any computer for any operating system and the third generation language it is easy to write program in the third generation because we need not to remember any code okay and directly we can write the program just in english words okay next we have the fourth generation language 
so fourth generation language is the advancement of third generation language only so some advancements have been done in the third generation and it uh, the advancements which are done in the third generation language they are so what is the advancement of the fourth generation language in the fourth generation language the program was more easier to write okay so fourth generation of language they are based on what you see is what you get okay it means you can design the program without coding so directly with the help of some tools you can design the interface of the program you need not to specify any code or you need to specify very little code for the fourth generation language programs so that's why we see in the fourth generation language we need to specify okay what to do we need to specify what to do and not how to do okay so this is the fourth generation language in which you need to specify what to do what task you want to perform and how to do means how to do the coding that is not needed so that will be done the, by the software only but in the third generation language you need to specify both what to do and how to do okay so what task you want to perform and in the software in the coding how that task will be performed both the questions were there in the third generation language but in fourth generation language you need to specify only one that is what to do how to do that coding will be done automatically so the example of fourth generation language is sql sql is a database language okay and the full form of this sql is structured query language okay in the beginning i told you three approaches okay that is the procedural structured programming and one more was there that is modular approach so here sql is a database programming language and its full form is structured query language okay so this language is based on the structured approach as i had told you in the beginning next came the fifth generation language so this is the latest approach or latest uh, generation of the language and the fifth generation is based uh, mainly on the ai ai is the artificial intelligence okay so dear student as you all know that nowadays everything is becoming smart even your mobile phones they are becoming smart and they are also having ai feature artificial intelligence features and these features are used in machine learning okay for example robots they use these type of uh, programming that is artificial intelligence artificial intelligence means the machines they can also act they can also think like uh, human beings they can also take decisions like human beings okay but machines are machines they are not humans okay but the type of intelligence uh, they have it is artificial it is given by the software only but the thing is the robots or uh, such machines which are having artificial intelligence they can learn okay they can also learn day by day okay from their surrounding and according to the learning they can take decision for the future so that is called artificial intelligence and still engineers or the scientists they are working on this okay and uh, this fifth generation language is under process so in the fifth generation language we have some examples that is the ops5 it is a language mercury is a language and these languages are used to develop program for the machines or for the artificial intelligence so these were the five generations of programming languages i hope you have understood the introduction okay let me revise we started with the introduction of programming i told you different approaches on which any language is based 
then I told you the evolution of programming language, low level and high level languages. Then I have explained the five generation of computer languages and hope you have studied these uh, uh, earlier as I told you to read out this chapter and now I think it will be more clear and uh, you have well understood this chapter. Still if you have any problem or any doubt is there you can message me or you can text me and I will clear your doubts. So I am going to wind up this audio here and uh, next uh, we will explain okay in the next video or audio we will explain the programming paradigms okay different approaches we will read out one by one what are the advantages or disadvantages of these approaches that i will explain you one by one so thanks for listening dear students